Okay, so I want to talk a about drop shipping again. We're continuing what we discussed. Uh, it was on Friday, I, and I'm wired up with my my mic, so um, I make sure I don't trip. All right, so we talked about um, drop shipping on Friday, and so on the last on our last uh, live uh, live call. So I want to talk about. There's more about a lot more and. We'll touch on this as time goes by. So um, definitely, you know, what I want to say, I, it was interesting today, I was reading some posts on someplace else, and someone put, it was a, it was a big um, thread about talking about how drop shipping is dead and it's no good, and, it, and a lot of comments were in there, yeah, it's really dead because I want you to stop drop shipping so it's easier for me. So, like I said in the last video, drop shipping is not going away. It's used by large, uh, some of the largest e-commerce businesses in the world use drop shipping. But we're going to talk about drop shipping and then just in general where to find where you can get products. And and I'm going to cover a lot of things that I I think get overlooked. Um, and just let me know in the in the chat uh, if there's any questions, and I'll try to fill in. In there, if there's anything else that you think I did, I missed. So let's just go through this. So, drop shipping, and just quick summary: drop shipping is when you uh, sell things on your e-commerce store, like Shopify or some other platform, and you don't in own the inventory. It's it comes from a warehouse. So uh, an example of drop shipping is using AliExpress, but uh, you can do drop shipping from other supply a lot many many uh, wholesalers and, and and manufacturers wholesalers and distributors that do drop shipping as well and they're a lot faster so let's talk about that right now about finding some of these places if you want to do drop shipping so first place to go so um, lots of ways to source products so we we want to as uh, e-commerce sellers we want to put stuff product on our store and we just want to sell it whether whether it's it's um it's something in our own inventory it's in our own fulfillment house our own warehouse or it's print on demand we just want things that we can sell we want to serve an audience uh i mean if you've got a niche that you're really working on then you you need to find more and more things to serve your customers. So that's what we're doing. We're serving our customers. When we want to do this in a way that makes it um, so our customers receive their products quickly and they'll be happy and they'll come back and buy more. And that's the gist of it. But we want to serve our customers and give them a good experience on our store. So let's talk, we're going to talk a lot about a whole bunch of things here. So where to source. So manufacturers, that's uh, in many cases people, uh, you'll go find a product, say you've tested a product on AliExpress, but you don't want to do that long, that drop shipping that takes a long time. And so you're going to fulfill it uh, in a fulfillment set, in a fulfillment warehouse, or you might have your own uh, warehouse. So then you'll, in, in many cases, you know, this is going to be something you import from China. I mean, you might find it domestically. But for inexpensive items, typically they're going to come from, from China or some country where the manufacturing cost is low. And you'll bring them into the United States, put them in a warehouse, and they get and then you have them shipped. Okay, so that's when you own your own inventory. All right, so then now there's um, these kind of these last three things. Um, print on demand that's really print on demand is drop shipping it's it's the same thing as aliexpress but you know usually the print on demand is, is a little bit faster or quite a bit faster but print on demand is drop shipping okay so um you don't own, own the inventory print on demand is drop shipping whether it's a t-shirt or a mug or whatever that's also drop shipping um so also, there inside the in the United States, in most industries, there are wholesalers and distributors. They can kind of be the same thing, um, but in many cases, you can use wholesalers and distributors for drop shipping or for buying a product in bulk, um, depending on 
it, and, and wholesalers and distributors, all, all they don't necessarily all do exactly the same thing. So that's going to take some research and some, and very likely some phone conversations with someone at the wholesaler distributor. Now, I um, for years I have had inventory of my own. And then I, for items that I only sell occasionally, I'll drop ship those. And so I'll have a relationship with a wholesaler or distributor to um, I'll bring in inventory for, of products that, are, that sell quickly, and then I'll drop ship those items that don't move quite as fast. So it's, kind of a, it's a hybrid method. But I only do that if that makes financial sense. If I can get a better deal, buying something in bulk then and it makes sense then i'll buy buy a larger amount of inventory now inside the united states you're normally the norm is that uh in in most states sales tax is charged so the reason why i bring this up is because if you to work with a wholesaler or distributor if your base if your business is in the united states and you want to do business with a wholesaler or distributor, one of the first things they're going to ask, they probably have some sort of form to fill out if you want to use their services. And they're, one of the things they're going to ask for is a resale number. And so what this resale number, it's, this is called many things in different, in different states. But generally speaking, a resale number means that you have a business in a state and you and the purchases that are made on your website, on your store, are you charge sales tax to people who buy most likely in your same state or whatever the rules are for your state. So that's something to find out. But generally speaking, if you're going to do business with a wholesaler or distributor and you want to get the lower, lower pricing, the wholesale pricing, you will very likely need a resale number. Now, if, you just, if you're lucky enough to live in a state that has no sales tax, they'll probably ask for a business license or some other proof that you're actually in business. Okay? So, there we go. So, I, let me just have a little side note here on sales tax. I mean, if, it's really easy to, to um, set up a, a Shopify store and put a bunch of stuff on there from AliExpress and start, sell, start selling product. But you should, um, uh, you know, either, you know, before or as soon as you make your first sale, you want, you definitely want to contact your state, you know, this is for those in the United States, on, on what, the, what you need to do. So you should set, your store should be set up properly from the beginning to collect the sales tax for those pro on, on what's required for your state. So basically for resale and sales tax, contact someone in your state government or your talk to your accountant, lawyer, whoever. You need to get some you know, advice on exactly how this is done. But typically, you, uh, when I opened up my first uh, store, I, I just went, I just knew um, you know, the state office and I filled out something on a website, or I think maybe it may have been paper back then. I just sent something in, and they assigned me a resale number, and then they, um, they sent me all the information on how all that sales tax that I collect, now I have to send it to, the, to them. And so that's how um, that will typically work. Um, so anyway... Uh, but definitely, if you're going to use wholesalers and distributors in the United States, you're very likely you're going to need to have a resale number or a business license. They just want to, they just want to make sure that you're in the business of reselling product. Okay, so um, you know some of the best ways of finding some of these places is just using Google. I mean, many, many, many of the um, both drop shipping and um, where I buy wholesale in bulk. Many of them I have found just using Google. So I've got my niche or, or so, something. So if I want to have like camping gear, well, I might just type, go into Google, you know, the simple way, you know, just like this, you just say camping equipment wholesaler or camping equipment distributor. So uh, that's one way of finding those places. It's just, it's as easy as that. And then um, 
Also, what I found is a great way to find uh, products and and drop shipping suppliers and all sorts of you know sources for product is to look at expo and trade show websites. So if there's a and so like for example, every year in uh, Las Vegas there's the SEMA show, which is a show all about uh, automotive uh, aftermarket uh, accessories and parts and all sorts of things. So there, there's many, many, many businesses that are looking for people to uh, to resell their products. So it's, it's a, typically, for the most part, that show is for people that are retailers or other distri- or retailers or distributors. So those kinds of places, you find the show that is appropriate for your niche or what you're looking for. And there's, I mean, literally hundreds and hundreds of these expos and trade shows that are related to, you know, a particular niche or industry. Um, All right. I think that's about all I wanted to talk about. So... um, I, I I wanted to address this because there's so there's there's all now there's this big sentiment that I kind of feel that uh, that many don't want to use AliExpress anymore and that's it's great to to think about um, your alternatives and there's lots of alternatives but um, the um, and drop shipping I, I I know people that are doing still continuing to. And many, many people who are doing extremely well drop shipping with AliExpress, but they do have to manage the whole issue of the time lag uh, of the products arriving. Um, but at some point, uh, my recommendation is, if it makes financial sense, is to bring it in. If you're drop shipping on AliExpress and you have successful products, do the numbers and go get some. Uh, go do your research to find the manufacturers of the product that you're drop shipping. And you'll very likely get much lower pricing. Bring those products in in bulk and fulfill here from here in the USA, if that's where your your target audience is. All right. So I want to make sure we're gonna. I'm gonna say this again. Yeah, I've got a question mark here this time. I had it wrong the last time. But drop shipping is not dead, and uh, AliExpress does not equal drop shipping. AliExpress is just a supplier. Print on demand is drop shipping, and some of the biggest, biggest stores on the internet use drop shipping uh, because it makes sense. Why would they, you know, if there's, if they want to list, say, you know, 100,000 items on their website, well, only, you know, if they've got 100,000 items on their website, they're only, there may be a small percentage that they can they that they where they can turn their over uh, their inventory quickly so they'll they may stock like all their hot items in their warehouse and then all those other th- items then they just drop ship so this is a terrific business model but it shouldn't be um i, I just don't get hung up with the term drop shipping but we should you know certainly we want to think about our customers so do, just doing churning, uh, you know, AliExpress drop shipping is probably not a, a good business for the long term. Definitely want to get into the place where you are shipping things from at least within the same country if you're doing a lot of business there and, and really make sure you're doing a good, you're serving your customer in a way that makes that, that they really feel comfortable with you, and they want to come back and buy more and more and more. And when you you can when your customers are happy, they keep coming back. I mean, I, one, my first um, e-commerce website, I started. It, I set it up in two, in uh, two thousand one, and I still have. I have people who have been buying from me for you know way over a decade, and they keep coming back. Because it, I serve them. I serve them. I make sure I've got the products that they want, and that they they want to get them quickly. And so we can ship overnight. We can do all those kinds of things because we have inventory here, and I can I can uh, ship things quickly. 
And that's the way you, and I can sit, you know, like if I get a brand, an item, what I really love about having your own inventory, especially products that people really, really want to buy, is I, I mean, when I, like if I run out of a hot item, I mean, this is uh, in, in this particular niche that I serve. Um, and so I'll have, there's some items that every once in a while they'll just sell out. And, you know, they'll, they'll try to get it at other places, but usually, you know, kind of all of us that sell some of these things are um, all out at the same time. So I always really work hard to get my product uh, inventory in earlier than all my competitors. And then um, and I can send out an email and make, you know, $50,000 in sales in, in a day just because, you know, they, they know they can come to me and buy it and I'll have it and I'll ship it in a timely manner. And, you know, when, it's just the, that's the great thing about having a really, uh, you know, good group of customers and, and have a good reputation with the customers that I'll ship quickly. All right. Um, I'll look at the comments. If there's any questions, I'll, I'll go through those and look forward to our next uh, Facebook Live.